Hello, I'm Alex Stevenson, and this is Intro to Cisco Modeling Labs for DevOps. CML is fantastic for DevOps because with it, we can update, test, and maintain our networks and configurations with automation. As developers continue to implement DevOps principles and practices, the legacy methods of manual configurations and testing and operations are a relic of the past. CML helps break down the barriers between the dev and ops silos by making it possible to build and test our networks at light speed based on a programmatic source of truth. CML helps us build our infrastructure as code to keep our networks flexible, resilient, and compliant. CML as infrastructure as code tool. Now, automation via IAC is at the core of continuous integration. CML simulations can be created and manipulated programmatically in addition to with the workbench you see in the lower right hand corner. CML can be automated in several ways with the command line interface via CML utils with the API that we will demonstrate with YAML simulation files that we will demonstrate as well and with Ansible modules which are also YAML files. For this demo, we're using the CML Sandbox found at devnetsandbox.cisco.com. I've already entered the VPN using Cisco AnyConnect and am observing the instructions, which include the IP addresses and credentials for each device shown on the right. Clicking on this diagram, we get detailed information about the relationships between each of those devices. For the network devices in our CML simulation, we click on the network devices tab and get the contact information for each of those. Clicking on this URL here will go straight to the Cisco Modeling Labs login. Using credentials from the instructions just shown, we enter the CML dashboard. One simulation is already spun up. We see it here. Click on it and we'll enter the workbench for that simulation. This is the drag and drop environment where we can add and delete nodes, add and delete links, look at the logging, enter the terminal for each device where applicable, and many other things. At the top are tabs for going back out to the dashboard or viewing the tools. Let's look at the API documentation. To make a REST API call, we'll use the instructions on this page to interact with our simulation. We're going to do that using Postman. In Postman, we use the URL from the API instructions to authenticate, selecting post in the body, the credentials from the sandbox instructions. Click send, get the token back, copy it, and move on to the next step. Now we'll make a get request to get the lab ID. Selecting bearer token under authentication, paste in the token, and append labs to the URL instead of authenticate. Clicking send, we get back the lab ID. Now we can get the state of all the elements in the simulation. Appending the lab ID as well as lab underscore element underscore state with the same bearer token, making a get request again, click send, and we'll get back the state of all the elements in the simulation within CML. Now let's focus in on the nodes. With the same lab ID, we append nodes to the URL, making a get request with the same token, click send. We get a list of all the nodes back. There are 13 in total currently. Now, we'll make a post request to the same URL, but in the body, we're gonna put the configuration information that I borrowed from the drag and drop workbench, post it into the body and click send. This will automatically create a new node with those configurations. So if we run our get request again, we'll see we have 14 nodes now. For our final act of using the API to interact with the CML simulation, we append PyATS underscore testbed after the lab ID, making a get request. Click send. We get back the PyATS testbed, which as you may already know, is invaluable for our CI-CD pipeline in DevOps. I'm going to copy this testbed and paste it straight into my IDE. The API is very handy 
and we can make use of it in our code to interact with CML, but we have a tool to do that. Under client library, we have VIRL client, which is a library containing pre-made Python modules that do the same thing the API does. Let's download it. Once we downloaded that, we can copy it from our downloads into a virtual environment on our local system. There it is, VIRL2 client. I'm going to install it with pip install. Here, I've created a file in my virtual environment and pasted in code from the VIRL2 client library, which will get us our Pi ATS test bed. We're going to see a warning about SSL when we run this. That's because we've selected SSL verify as false. Running the code using Python. The warning. And let's view the results. Here we have the Pi ATS testbed, exactly the same as the Pi ATS testbed we got from the API. Now this VIRL2 client module is used to create a lab simulation in CML with nodes and links. The Python code, which you see on the left, is relatively short and simple, and it was used to make the lab you see on the right in the dashboard. Now we're tapping into the true power of CML for DevOps as we can create or make changes to our network in the simulation, test them, and then export and replicate in our own network via the Pi ATS testbed. To learn more about Pi ATS, visit developer.cisco.com. After all, it was Cisco who made Pi ATS and shared it with the world. It's often used for network automation, testing, CI CD safety nets, and more. And there's videos here talking about it, as well as learning labs that get you started. Don't forget to try out the sandboxes. And there's even code submitted by the user community. In this video, we've seen how we can use automation with CML to construct our infrastructure as code. We've interacted with CML via the dashboard, via the API, and via the VIRL2 client library. This has resulted in a Pi ATS testbed we can use for our CI CD pipeline. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. Thank you and have a great day. To learn more about DevOps at Cisco, to share, to network, to grow, visit us at community.cisco.com. We're under technology and support in the developer hub. Hope to see you there.